My name's Nicole and I am 22 year old at McMaster in my fourth year. Um, my name's Kristen, I'm Nicole's friend. I'm also 22 and I'm doing my master's of global health at McMaster. Nicole and I met when we were three years old. Um, she's one of my oldest friends. We've known each other forever. As I was finishing Guelph uh, University first year, I noticed that there were some differences that I was seeing. I think it was like the pressures from school that I was experiencing. One of my friends that was really into fitness, he was sort of really encouraging me to go to the gym with him and I was and we were sort of making a routine out of every day and it just, it sort of became very competitive like for myself, like I just wanted to be perfect in everything that I did. Um, I wanted to control other parts of my life that I couldn't with school because I knew that I wasn't doing well. Like I'd always wear sweatpants or I'd always try to wear baggy clothes to hide the fact that, you know, I really was emaciated. The first time I saw Nicole, I, I think she called me up and she said she wanted to go to the gym with me. Um, and so I said, oh, okay, cool, like, I'll come over. And I pulled up in front of her house and she opened the front door and she was wearing sweatpants and a sweatshirt. Um, and I remember thinking like, I'm sorry, what? Like, she looks like a different person. I've known her forever and I, she'd never had disordered eating before. At her worst, she weighed 100 pounds less than she does now. So, I mean, it was, it was pretty obvious something was going on. <laughs> one time. And, yeah, one time, okay. <laughs> one time I was at her house and she was like, oh, Kristen, let's have dinner. And I was like, okay, I'm so hungry because we had just been at the gym. So I made her shrimps. She made me like... I think we gave it each like eight shrimps. <laughs> I was, I was yeah. like, bon appetit. She gave me like seven shrimps and I, I remember like eating those shrimps and being like, wow, I'm not full <laughs> whatsoever. Like something, well, I knew something was wrong, but I was like, okay, like I, I, need, to, I need to start taking more action. Yeah. Meanwhile, I was like, oh, so full. Let's go for a run now. She was, she was shrinking in front of my eyes and I think that was really, really hard to see. I was dealing with all of these emotions, guilt, shame, um, frustration, uh, anger even, um, and then eventually it came to some sort of understanding um, and acceptance. I was guilty for, um, for kind of missing what was going on in her first year. Um, and I was, I was ashamed that I wasn't, I wasn't there. I mean, I was there when she got home and I haven't left since, but, um, I was dealing with those feelings and I was confused, um, about like why Nicole. I was sort of so sick of everyone just being like, you need help, you need help. Like I knew that at, you know, quite early on that, you know, I was not doing well and, you know, I was getting worse, but. I thought that I, this is something I could fix on my own. I was immensely relieved when um, I found out that Nicole was going to go to the hospital. I mean, I knew it was something that needed to happen and as hard as it is to say goodbye to your friend, well, I mean, it wasn't goodbye because I went all the time, <laughs> but like to kind of have her go away. So I was there for eight months in total. It was a scary place for sure. It was very, very strict, and you were very restricted in what you did and, you know, your daily activities and what you could have with you, what you couldn't have with you. If you're supporting someone who's going through something similar, self-care is so important. It's hard um, because I feel like if, if someone's comfortable enough to, to use you as a support, um, you're most likely going to be a support to other people as well and so sometimes you can feel pulled in many different directions and, mm -hmm. um, and, and you're spending the whole time trying to swim, I guess, but um, you can feel like you're sinking. I think so often um, when you're in a position of support you want to save someone or you want to kind of catch them when they're falling. Um, and I think more than anything, it's rather than catching someone or saving someone, it's about meeting them, um, meeting them on their own terms or meeting them where they feel comfortable. You have to be a collaborator rather than like a catcher, so to speak. Like it's not your job to catch them, it's your job to, to help them. 
Nicole is and always has been my best friend. I'm like, there's nothing that I wouldn't do for her. <laughs>